Holy smokes, you know, I had this video ready a couple of days ago, but I didn't know what to talk about in it because I like the video aspect that I put together, but it's kind of a science fiction thing. And today on MSN, when I open up my computer, there it is. There's a particle accelerator that might destroy the planet. How much more science fiction can you get? I mean, can you imagine that right now there are scientists that are working on this particle smasher that could create Today, little black the holes plan, which they don't know what it, it will do to the planet. So now there are lawsuits brought in the United States and Europe to prevent them from firing up this particle smasher until they have a better, better idea of what it's going to do. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that they should just... Science is so established and so right that they oh should just yeah. be able to turn on the is. machine and start smashing the particles together to see what happens? I think science in many ways has proven its validity. I mean, there was a time when Columbus was told, don't sail off, you know, you're going to fall off the end of the world. And he didn't. And science also said that, you know, you can go through the speed of sound and not get smashed or blown apart. But there are some things that science has done that are not positive for our planet. And one of the things that really worries me is that so many of the things that science develops eventually or automatically become weaponized. What if some military power somewhere finds a way to uh, weaponize little black holes? I mean, can you imagine the damage that be, could be done with a lot of little black holes? A gun that would shoot something that maybe a person wouldn't even vaporize, it would just disappear like you see in science fiction movies. It's not far-fetched. I mean, they're looking for uh, dimensions. Like, I made a video where I was joking about, like, all these... Mul uh, I called it dementia because it was a joke, but scientists think that there might be multiple dimensions on this planet and maybe these particle accelerators will open up doorways i think that would be phenomenal what if aliens and ufos don't come from faraway planets but from our future or our current dimensions but what happens if they open up a door that they can't close what happens if there are things behind the door that we don't want to overhear I don't know. I don't have the answers. Oh, yeah. I do know yeah, that science is moving is. ahead at an unbelievable speed. But even with all the scientific expansion and knowledge, there's still a lot of traditional things happening on the planet. There's a vice presidential candidate who believes that God is on hers and the Republican side. It's even on the side of the Bush administration and going to war. I mean that if you pray to God for an oil pipeline, it'll happen. It's a scary thought. She also believes that the end of time will come. And I don't know if I want somebody that religious in the White House with their finger on the button. Now, I know I don't have a choice in that, but it is a very deep thought. All these things can be looked up on the internet that I'm saying, or, or, or you see uh, written out there. That's where I get it from. I mean. The internet is a phenomenal source. I, d I don't think of it today as uh, Yo, the information yeah, age. I think of it is. as the awareness age. That if somebody wants to become aware of what is going on in the world around them, it's very easy to do. Not just locally. It's not like picking up my local newspaper uh, where we live. But instantly, I can get information from anywhere around the world. And it's updated regularly. And I can go into science, I can go into news, I can go into politics. It's phenomenal. We have to be aware. Science fiction has shown so many different things to us in our imaginations that when I started making this little video, like I said, I made the video and I was thinking, what would it show like, you know, you're going through these little portals and you're going from above the world down into this underworld. And then it almost seems like there's people that are playing into the role of that. Like, it, it's just bizarre.
but it's also not new. And some of the things that I read on the internet, and I'm like I said, Yo, you know, yeah. I Can try to be skeptical about it, uh, take both sides. But some of the things that I read are really, really uh, puzzling, bizarre, and worrisome. So I do more research, and when it's substantiated, then there's something to it. I mean, can you imagine that a uh, church pastor said that if you vote, vote for Kerry, you're going to go to hell? I mean, what the heck is all that about? You want to frighten people? You know, I'm not frightened about the doomsday. I'm frightened about idiots out there who do things like that. And especially, even more so, the idiots that believe it. Oh, I'm not going to vote for Kerry because I'll go to hell. Like, come on, people, get a brain. Now, what you do, just jump out of a tree with a banana in your hand? But science has taken the doomsday uh, thought seriously. There's a doomsday vault with seeds in it. And I, it was really interesting when I was reading some more about that, that some of the seeds have to be protected because war, war itself is destroying the plants. Some of the places like are in uh, Afghanistan and in Iraq. It's unbelievable. Could the American government be actually weaponizing avian flu? Again, that, that's just a recent thing that I found on the internet. And it's not a, about any government. I mean, I could, it's not about the U.S. government. I could see many governments out there doing something like that. It doesn't have to be a, you know, it could be Al-Qaeda, it could be the Russians, it could be the Iraqis, Iranians, it could be Americans, I mean, French, who knows? Who knows what governments are involved in what... Uh, diabolical scheme to get the upper hand on other countries to have that one final uh, thrust you know but the only thing is that when you have that final thrust there's nothing else to save two chunks of ice shell 47 square miles in size had broken away because of global warming and it's already now seen that like the Antarctic then the northern passage will be passable by ships in the near future and it's never happened and it's been known and said that polar bears will be threatened by it because they hunt on the ice flows the seals uh, there's uh, beluga whale, whales narwhals right whales all these different things will be endangered because of the global warming it's not about uh, spreading fear. I mean, we should all be damn fearful right now about what's happening and become aware and try to change it. Vote for politicians who talk, at least, at least they talk the talk about the environment. Not about war and fighting. And I'm even talking about here in Canada. Our uh, Stephen Harper government, the conservatives, a minority conservative government that is so war happy. You know, war isn't the answer for mankind. It never was and it never will be. And I don't know if science is or religion is, but maybe just being aware of things might help many people come to terms and come to a better understanding of what life is about. A little bit of each. A little bit of science, a little bit of religion, a little bit of everything coming together. Doomsday, December 2012. Maybe if we make it that long. Let's hope it's not correct. <laughs>